slides. If you don't want to be recorded, um, <laughs> take your video off. So uh, welcome to a semi-Tidy Tuesday. Tidy Tuesday is a uh, weekly event that is part of the R community where you go and you tidy up a data, data set. This is only semi-tidy Tuesday because we're not using the current data set for this week. And we've tidied it in advance a little bit and we're not doing that much tidying. Um, but it's a really fun data set and it's Tuesday. So this is data frame to simple maps with me, Tessa Shapes, the PhD candidate in, an eco in entomology, not ecology. Um, the purpose of this presentation is to teach you how to go from a data frame, so latitude, longitude, data point, to a uh, map worthy of a presentation that you can share your uh, data with. Um, for today's data set, um, we're going to be using UFO sightings from around the world. And that's a link to the data set. Um, there is a link to it in the RMD file. So in the chat, hopefully in a moment, or when I stop sharing my screen for a bit, uh, we can put the link into the Our Ladies chapter for the Riverside chapter where I have both the slides and the RMD code. There will be a lot of packages, so it's easier if you have the RMD file available um, for that. But I'll try to go slow in case you don't. Um, so as a little background for maps, mapping and geographic information system, GIS, often use vector and raster files. This, these can be challenging types of data. But a lot of times, all we have as scientists out in the field are point data. The latitude and longitude we collect while sampling plants or insects. Um, and it can be a little challenging for, if you're not a GIS expert, to go from that point data to a pretty map. So using the point data from a data set on UFO sightings, we'll work on creating maps with uh, simple but accurate, that are simple but accurate. So from data frame to beyond. Today's game plan is downloading the appropriate libraries and the data set, tidying up the data set or narrowing it down so that we don't have too many points, and ultimately data visualization, making the map. We'll be using base R, ggplot and bubble maps, the natural earth data set, and then some interactive maps. Um, I won't show you uh, how to use ggmap today, but I did provide code for ggmap. My API access key ran out, but um, I'll show you how to use that. All right, so now um, I'm going to switch my screen and let me stop share first. So, okay, the RMD file and the R code is now in the chat. If, um, let's see if I can switch my screen. Uh, the link, the slides also have uh, links to other resources if you wanna do maps with shape files. I won't be using shape or raster files today. So I'm gonna share my RStudio page. There we go. So let's see, can everyone see this? Can I have thumbs up or? All right, yeah, I see nods, excellent. Um, this is the RMD file that all of you have access to. And um, if you're not familiar with RMD, there's a lot of resources out there. RMD is R Markdown. It allows you to create Word or PDF or HTML documents that are knitted together. So you have not only your code, but also some uh, types some regular typing. So it's a really neat thing. There's a lot of resources on that online, but I won't, won't teach that today. So the, the first step um, is downloading it. I'm gonna wait a couple of seconds to make sure that people have a chance to download the document and um, at, take any questions at this moment. Oh, uh, one of the questions is, can you remind how to download for, from GitHub? So we'll be downloading the UFO data set from GitHub. I actually have the code for that in the RMD file. So uh, unless there's a 
other step that I'm missing? Oh, I guess download the RMD file from GitHub. Daniela, is there a secret? <laughs> if you are in Linux, uh, is W uh, on the terminal? You can use wget. And let me put in the chat the full um, um, link to download. But if you are in R, you can use the function. I think is. Can you type for me? Is download dot file? I believe. So yeah. then you specify. Um, are you typing on the on the terminal on the console? Oh, oh, you want me to type into the console? Okay, yeah, if you can do that. Yes, I can try. Okay, terminal or console? No, uh, the the console. Console. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I think it's download and use tab. So then we will help you. Download tab. Yeah, press tab. Yeah, download file. Yeah, and then you specify with quotations the um what I'm putting on the um on the chat right now. One second. Yes. Um, and then you need to specify the name, any name you want to give to the file. So comma, probably, and I'll comma, just- yeah, Exactly. And I'll some name. Tessa RMD. <laughs> yeah, but then with quotations as well. With quotations as well. I am also learning how to do this right now, so. Okay, I'm and gonna- that will work. Give it a shot. It yeah. downloaded. it. Okay, yeah. so hopefully this helped. Um, let me make sure, yep, Tessa RMD turn, came up in my files. Um, can we see some thumbs ups or a show of hands or something to show if anyone has issues or if um, things are working or not? Paste the line of code here. Yes, absolutely. That is a good idea, Eva. I just, I just, I just did. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so the line of code is in the chat. Yes, um, Daniela pasted it, but I'll paste it again. Um, you can name your file, not Tessa RMD. <laughs> I just did that. What I should, sorry, what I should do? Oh, uh, someone requested pasting it again, so I did. Okay, I'm sorry. No worries. Okay, it's been maybe a minute or two, so I'm going to assume that most people have downloaded the file and start moving up. So there are a lot of libraries associated with maps. Um, most of you will have to install these libraries. I've done it in advance. So I'm just going to hit play, uh, hit run on this chunk of code, but I will wait a little bit longer for the viewers to install. And uh, as a reminder, at the top of my screen here, I'm going to, or in the console actually, this is how the code for installing packages works. So you go, oh, uh, type. So, uh, no. All right. And I'll just put that in here so that if anyone's having issues installing, it's now on the chat. Okay. I'm gonna keep pressing on. If this is going too fast, you can speak up and unmute yourself or if you have any questions, put it in the chat. So to read in the CSV file and reduce and evaluate the data set, I have some steps pre-written. So reading in the data set, it's from um, a GitHub account that I found through the Tidy Tuesday.
it's only for me. Did we lose Tessa? Um, I think so. Probably we can wait one minute to, to her to come back. I guess while we're waiting for Tessa, I'm actually still having trouble downloading something I can open. And I tried both the wget option and the download file option. And they're just not, I, I it could be the file extension. I was um, gonna say, you, you need the dot RMD as opposed to the underscore RMD. So that way cool. you know it's an RMD file. Have you tried that? I'm going to try that right now and just double check. Okay. But yeah, I tried wget and it downloaded the RMD file, but it was all in HTML and. Oh, not... um, maybe I can share my screen to show you. Um, sure. Can, um, how to do that on GitHub. Okay, I have too many things open. Give me a second. <laughs> okay, um, share the screen. Um, okay. So many things open, one second. Google Chrome, our ladies, I think. Please let me know if you were, if you can see my, uh, the GitHub. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We can have so GitHub. for instance, when you, when you get here, um, you have the link to the slides and to the code. When you click on the code, um, you come to this page, right? So this is the R markdown in the format you can read. If you copy here and try to the double get, probably if I'm not mistaken, that what is happening, it will be downloaded probably as HTML. What you need, you need to click on raw here. So when you click here, then you copy and paste um, the URL here, then it will be downloaded as uh, .rmd. And the name, if you're using the uh, download file, when you specify the name, I believe also you, sh you should specify the, the extension, the .rmd, okay? Um, let me know, uh, Hannah, if that works for you. Yeah, I pasted the raw link and it's uh, still giving it to me in all HTML. Um, okay. Is there a way maybe I could just clone the repository and do it that way? Yeah, you could You could clone, yes. You could clone locally the, the repo and then you have the file. That should work. The, the other thing is if you go to the raw page and you copy and paste, the entire page to um, our markdown file you have an open in R that will work also. Hi everyone, I'm back. I made it back. I don't know what happened to my Wi Fi. It's never happened, but now I'm on a personal hotspot. <laughs> so, um, does it, Daniela, is everything okay? Should I, Teresa, should I just pop back on to sharing my screen or where? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> um, life's a little more exciting with te technical difficulties. All right, so I'm back to sharing the screen. Um, previously, I had issues with re-downloading the file, but that's because my Wi-Fi stopped. If you're downloading something from online, you do need Wi-Fi. So I downloaded the file, so by using this line of code, and we wanna learn more about the data before we start playing. You always want to learn about your data set. Um, so I'm going to use the function head to see what, what's going on. Find selected line. 
So with our markdown, it's going to pop up down here below the chunk of code. So we have date and time, a city area, a state, a country, UFO shape, the length of the encounter. Um, so there's 11 col columns. We can also put it down here in the um, console to see it down here. So now we know what columns we have. So these are what data points we have. And this includes latitude and longitude, but that one's off the page here. Um, so we're going to want to clean up this data set because there's a lot happening and we can't use so much of it. Um, so I'm going to narrow it down to a country. And because I'm located in the United States, I'm picking the United States. When you go through this data set on your own, you can always modify it to what you're more excited about. So I modified to just the United States and I'm going to remove anything next that has a no answer. So you can see for countries, some of them have NA or for um, state NA. I don't wanna deal with the no answers. So once again, I omit. And then um, in the console here, I'm gonna have the UFO shapes come up. So we have my data set, which I've named UFO3. Each time I modify the data set, I rename to a new name. Um, so we have UFO3, and I want to see what types of UFO shapes I have. So using the dollar sign, we can print everything that comes up with UFO shape. So we have a lot of different kinds, which is pretty exciting. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I've noticed that some of them have unknown, just like the NAs, those are less valuable to me, my own personal bias. So I'm gonna remove everything that says unknown. So unknowns removed. So now that we've narrowed it down. Can I pause you for a second, Tessa? Yes, yes, go ahead. Um, just so everybody knows, um, the line on 61 and 67, those are just two different ways to subset your data. So Tessa here is kind of showcasing that there are a million different methods, not obviously not literally, but there are often many, many methods to achieve the same goal. So here's two examples of how to subset your data. Yeah, thank you, Teresa, that's great. Um, I sometimes don't pick, I like mix it up what I do. Uh, so now, that we've subset the data. So I've removed the unknown. So Teresa gave me a better word there. Uh, I'm going to get the dimensions of the data set. So dim is the function for dimensions as well as the number of columns and number of rows. So we have uh, a lot, still it's 58,000, almost you know 59,000 rows by 11 columns. So number of columns is 11, number of rows is 58,000. So I've included these separate functions just so you can see when you're examining your own data sets, here's the functions for that. So my next chunk of code is actually Teresa's doing. She did help me with some data wrangling with the dates because um, what you might remember is, so let me go, let me pull up the data set and I'll pull up UFO four and that first column date time, these are some pretty, obnoxious ways to report date and time. So Teresa has gone through and using the library or the packages Luberdate and Tidyverse, she has done a great job with creating um, better columns. So I don't know if Teresa wants to go through, through this real quick or if I should just run the code and clean up the data set. I'm happy to help whatever, whatever folks need. Okay, so um, this is the head function again to you know view the top of the data or the first uh, rows with all the columns. So um, this here, we're using the tidyverse or the tidy packages. I don't remember what this symbol is called, but it's indicating that from here on out, we're using this data set with the following code. So uh, um, that's the pipe operator as yeah, people are talking called. about in the, in, the, in the chat. Yes, pipe operator. Um, I've been using R for a while, but 
I'm sure all of you know that it can feel like you're always a beginner, but that means there's just a lot to learn about R. Uh, so every day is a learning experience, which is great. So um, we're pulling out the um, dates and times from the years, and let me just run through that, and then you can see how the data set changes. So UFO 4, which is the data set before, the date and time were printed this way. And then UFO 5, the next data set, we still have that column. We didn't remove it. But at the end, we also have the date documented and the month and the year separate. So now we have 13 columns rather than 11. So it's pretty neat. So now I'm going to actually start some mapping, uh, what we're all here for. And so I'm starting with base R. I pulled some of the named variables from a class I took where I got to see how you could simply do it. Yes, Hannah, I see you. Sorry, I just wanted to point out there was a question in the chat. Oh, I do not see the chat. So let me go. About the, the date parsing. Okay, Teresa, do you want to answer the question? Because I sure. Do you mind scrolling back up to that chunk of code? Yes. Great. Um, so the Luber date package dates can be um, saved in these. I think they're POSIX formats, and they're different. Um, you can put the dates in different orders. So basically, you need to know um, what I'm looking at here in this um, in the head function is is basically like how that date looks. So we can specify that later. Um, and then we take our data set and then this mutate function basically adds columns to your existing data frame and doesn't really change the geometry of the data frame at all. And so what I'm saying here in this parse time and date is to kind of separate that information to say, okay, we want to know we have it in this month, day, year format, and then hour, minute. Um, so then basically this is kind of changing the format so that we can pull out those little pieces of information in these next um, lines of code. So this year is basically saying from this parse date, pull out the year. And then for month, it's pulling out the month information from that parse date. But you need to make sure that that order in this um, quote MDY underscore HM matches what your date actually looks like so that you can point that information to the right parts. Is that, is that uh, the explanation you're looking for? I certainly learned more about it. Great. Um, okay, so if you have more questions about the Luberdate function, um, we can come back to it in a little bit, but I'd like to start some mapping. So, uh, Base R, you don't have to use any new packages, just really simple. So for this, I'm pulling out the longitude and the latitude using the dollar signs again. And then I'm going to start with a basic plot. Um, there's no map in the background. These are simply our um, latitude and longitude for UFO sightings. And it's taking a moment, which you might notice it's taking a moment for you as well because there are a lot. So this is just the US, the continent, uh, continental and non-continental US. And just based on the points, you can see the shape of the country, which is pretty funny, but there are so many. But that means we have really too many points to understand what's going on. So because of that, I subset the data set. And um, once again, I'm biased, California, been here all my life. so. I am focusing just on one state. So you can choose the state you're in or you can follow with California. So I've only, you know, I've done the subsetting using the brackets again. And then now I want to see what shapes are included in California. Um, I'm not going to print all of that again because it's just going to be a big blob of text. But I am subsetting to only include fireballs, formations, flashes, flares, and disks, because these are the coolest types of UFO sightings, of course. Um, so once again, I've subset. And now we're going to plot again to see the difference with just California and with just these. Um, I didn't plot yet. Those are just defining the variables. You could technically you know, put this in 
to there, but I prefer to, I mean, this into there, but I prefer to define the variables. So it's a cleaner uh, line of code. So here's California with just UFO sightings of those five flavors. And that's base R. Base R is not my favorite because there's not much you can do to make it pretty. So now I'm going to show some examples using ggplot. So ggplot2 is the package for this. So hopefully you've done library ggplot2. Um, it is part of the tidyverse packages. So I am using that pipe again here. So I'm using the UFO6, which is just California. And I've already kind of built um, a fairly fleshed out ggplot. But for a simpler version, we could just go UFO6. Oh, I guess we don't want to put it down there, but we could do UFO6 pipe, which is shift control M on shift control M on a Mac for the pipe. And from here, you can go ggplot and just run that very simply. And you'll get, well, I'm not sure if we'll get anything because I didn't define the variables. <laughs> um, so you want to do that. You want to define what the points are. So let me let me not do that. Um, OK, so ggplot, which is what I just did, but it, I didn't define the points. You need to use gm point to define the point. And so here I'm saying that my points are longitude and latitude. What's inside here needs to match the name of the column. So if your longitude and latitude has capital L, capital L, you need to match. So I've also picked a theme and I've given it a title, but these are optional things. The plus sign after each line is adding it to the previous line of code. So I'm going to go ahead and just run that. And hopefully this time it'll participate. All right, so it has. Um, this is the same thing as before, but now it's a prettier plot because it's ggplot, my, my bias. We also have a title. So all of these things are kind of built, but the most essential are these three lines here. Um, that didn't work, learning moment. Um, and here, Teresa also helped me out with this group here, which was really neat, are um, making bubble plots. And we're grouping by city area. And then um, we're going to summarize. And it shrinks our rows. Um, and we could keep it as a grouping variable, but there might be differences within the city area. But I'm going to run this group here. and. You'll see what I mean by bubble plot in a moment. It didn't show up, not sure why. Let's see. Because it's named as an object, you just need to like write the object in the console and it will pop up. Pop up. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. So there we go. That didn't work quite well. And city. Oh my gosh. Let's try that again. I think you're getting ahead of yourself. I think the, the ggplot code is later on. Oh, you're yeah. Not playing I am, anything here. I am getting ahead of myself. <laughs> so, this is just defining and summarizing to put into the bubble plot um, and grouping by city area. Here is the bubble plot. I definitely did get ahead of myself. So you can see the number of sightings will have larger bubbles than um, larger bubbles for more sightings, smaller bubbles for fewer sightings. Um, and so we've summarized based on regions. So that's how we know which regions have larger or smaller bubbles. This is kind of a more complex thing, which is just kind of fun to do, but we don't have to keep doing that. Um, so now maybe we want to get more involved with prettier backgrounds. This is using the natural earth package and data set. So we need to um, bring in 
the data set. So it's basically like once you've done library natural earth, you still need to do this. And I have the link in the um, PowerPoint at the end. I have a bunch of resources. One of the resources was how to use natural, natural world. Um, this line of code class world prints out the type of data sets and we still have a data frame. Um, so we want to plot the whole world, plots all countries and borders. So once again, I'm doing ggplot. And in a moment, it should give us, oh, it's going to give it down here, the entire world. But this won't really do if we're all focused on California, so we have to kind of zoom in. Um, here I actually played around with the data set, giving it different titles and colors. But yeah, the package should be natural world or natural earth. It's listed in my packages. Oh yeah, our natural earth. Okay, so I'm not going to show all the playing around with adding titles and stuff to that. But previously, I looked up boundaries for latitude and longitude for the West Coast in California. So I plugged them in here. These are my boundaries. And I've given it a title and a theme, which these are optional. And I've also given it a color for the fill and outline is black. So it's thinking. R does a lot of thinking in it. All right, so here's the USA West Coast using Natural World. And um, I had pulled from one of the optional packages. I listed the LaCroix color yellow because I think all the color themes in R that people put in GitHub are really fun. I have just changed the color once it loads to be yellow because I think California is more yellow than green, but that's because I'm down in Riverside. Um, so now let's go back to the UFO data. And this is the same as the last plot, the yellow. So I have geom SF, data is world, but my um, geom points, the points I fill into it are from the UFO six data set, which is just Southern California of the five most exciting shapes. So that will show up in a moment down here, or it won't. I did, okay. So um, R automatically chooses colors for your different plots if there's different things, if you're, if you're separating it by shape. So I indicated that the color is UFO shape, then it will, shift through different colors. So you can see that based on shapes, you know, I have flashes over here and then discs and fireballs filling into the map. And now let's bring back Teresa's bubble plot. We can take that same bubble plot and put it on top of natural earth. Once it finishes loading in a moment. There we go. So you can see that same bubble plot that didn't have a background, now it does. Um, something really cool are interactive maps, which I learned about last quarter from a classmate. And this is actually how I pulled the California longitude latitude data set. So this package is leaflet. And with it, um, so I said UFO 6 is the data set. The X column is the longitude, the Y is the latitude, and you can actually play and zoom in or zoom out with the map. And if you scroll over it, it's really teeny tiny, but on the top left, you can see latitude and longitude. So this is a really neat thing. And you can also, um, if you run it in the console, it'll come up over here. Let me see if I can do that. You run it in the console, it will come up where your files or your um, things over here will come up. And with that, you can export a picture. So it's a really neat thing. There's a lot more you can do with it, but I haven't spent too much time changing colors or pictures, but um, it's a nice way to 
generate a map pretty easily. So then lastly, my favorite thing, which my API key ran out, of course, right before this, is doing ggplot and ggmap. And this is using Google Earth. So I'll pull up a picture of a map in a little bit from what I've actually done. Yes, actually done. Yeah. We have a question on the chat. What is the CRS? You have this argument on the map view um, function. Um, let's so see. You have the X. I'm actually yeah, not sure. One. Uh, I just used whatever was part of the like instructions. But we can go like this. You can see the help, yes. Yeah, we can check out the help, and I can hear my echo in your thing. Uh, CRS is the coordinate reference system, so it's basically the way that your map is projected because you know, the earth is not flat and you need to project it onto a flat surface. And so it, it, there are different ways of doing that, which will distort, um, what sort of, will distort kind of the land shapes differently. Um, so whatever you're doing, you just wanna make sure that you're matching the appropriate um, coordinate systems. But usually when you have points in an X, Y format, you can kind of put it, I think that that's fine to put it on any reference system, but one of the, the typical ones, which, I think, don't quote me on this, we need to look it up. I think 4269 is WGS 1984, which is a very common um, way of kind of projecting the surface of the earth. So not an R thing, it's a, it's a GIS thing. That's why I don't know it. I always get the GIS stuff just to do maps. Um, okay, so then I got a question. How did you get the viewer window to show the map? So if you want your, if you're using an RMD file, the R markdown, and you want your figure to come up in this window here rather than in the RMD file, you just type the, um, the line of code into the console instead. So any of my plots could come up here instead of within here. So I'm putting it here in that console, and then here it should, in a moment, pop up. Okay, so my most exciting thing, favorite thing to do is to use ggplot, but also ggmap, which is using Google Earth. And that way you can import terrain and different satellite images. So you can have a more true to your environment map. But um, this can be tricky. I included links to API pricing. It's free for the first, like 1000 requests. But after that, which it took me about a year to get there, it's no more than $3 a month for like an extra 5000 requests or something. It's a little a little tricky to get the numbers worked out there, but it's fairly cheap. Um, I did also include instructions on how to get the API key and ggmap usage. So before you can play with ggmap, you need to put your API key attached to your R Studio, And that's something that you don't share with other people because it is attached to your credit card. So this is why a lot of the other resources I presented are better because they're freer. But until you max out your key, it is free. Um, I included here some code to just put on different satellite and terrain, um, the same stuff, but different background. Uh, it won't work today because the API key ran out, but I do have some pictures of example maps and I'll pull those up in a moment. So I'm going to unshare my screen, pull up an example map of a um, GG map map. And from there, we'll move on to the next part of Tidy Tuesday. So let me see if I can unshare my screen. But I can't even make any part of that. So if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat or um, I'll get to it in a moment. I just want to show what one of those maps would look like. If it will find her.
Okay, so I'm pulling up a map now, share screen. Um, this is just one of my own. Can you see it? Oh, nope, you can't. Okay, so here you can have, uh, this is Southern California. These are my own personal field sites that I visit, not, not like personal ones, but the ones I go to for my own research. And you can see that you have an actual terrain and I've added things like a title, remove the X and Y, longitude, latitude um, marks, because I don't, personal preference, I don't want them there. You can add labels, you can add colors to your points and using another package, you can add a scale bar. Um, so this is what the GG map would look like. Anyways, I'll stop screen share and we'll move on to questions. Okay, any questions? I know this was a lot, but I was hoping to provide tools to make your own maps with your potentially your own data sets, but also following any you find online. Any questions, comments? I have never, okay, so I got another question about the viewer tab. Um, this is my first time using the viewer tab. It just shows up automatically using the um, leaflet package. So we can pull up a link for leaflet package map. It's actually one of my classmates. I don't know if she's here today, but Jolene showed me this during a class and it's pretty neat. I'm going to put the link for the package in the um, chat. So if you wanted to play around more with the interactive mapping. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> There's a lot to say about mapping, especially if you're avoiding raster files and vector files. So, um, but there are ways to make maps without, you know, ArcGIS and QGIS. Uh, R is improving greatly in that regard. Just also a quick word um, with the R Natural Earth package, when you add the Geome SF line of code, so you actually are working with shape files there. So, I mean, it's like, even though there, I think with GIS, sometimes there can be um, like a daunting aspect or like a sharp learning curve, but, um, but in this instance, it's actually just two lines of code to get those nice, boundaries in there, which are actually a, a polygon shape file. Um, so that's a that's a very gentle introduction. So just a <laughs> word of encouragement that even though you may not feel like it, you actually are all have just worked with some shape files there. So definitely didn't feel it, but apparently I did. Thank you. Also, as far as opening the questions up, we can, I think we can also open up to like, if there are questions on um, like progressions, if there are things that people themselves want to map or additional like, oh, how would you, you know, change the shape of a, of a point on the map or um, anything like that. If there's anything that people have a particular use for maps and haven't um, figured out how to do, this is a great place to ask those types of questions. No judgment here. And also suggestions for the um, next meetings. If you want to see something specific, please let us know. I feel like we should have um, like jazz in the background while we wait, but <laughs> good option. Next time. But. Uh 
all right thank you everyone for you know showing up and i hope this was useful